Strength Faith builds are super reliable and versatile in Elden Ring. I've recently used such a build to finish my new game plus 6 run, and these builds have gotten a few new, neat new things in the DLC, but also some of the existing things they already had are still just super solid and reliable. In this video, I'll be showing the weapons and build setups that I used, split into 4 categories, Divine Bonk, Crucible, Destined Death, and Magma. Just keep in mind, I'm at New Game Plus 6 in this video, so I am at a higher level than what you might be, but I will advise what you can do to play the build at a lower level. Let's get started. Alright, so first off we have the Magma setup. This utilizes two very powerful weapons together, the Blasphemous Blade and the Magma Arm Scale Sword. Both of these weapons scale very well with Strength and Faith, and their skills deal Magma damage, so they benefit from the new Dread Talisman from the DLC, allowing them to deal 14% more damage, which is a huge increase. The Blasphemous Blade I'm sure needs no introduction, I'm sure we all know by now just how good this weapon is. But the main star of the build is actually the Magma Arm Scale Sword. I prioritize using this over Blasphemous most of the time, because the skill on it does a lot more damage, and the weapon also just has a higher attack rating than Blasphemous. But using the two weapons together is actually perfect synergy because the Scale Sword skill needs you to be pretty close to the enemy, while Blasphemous is a ranged attack, so in battle I'm switching between these weapons in the same fight depending on which is better for specific moments in each fight. Used like this, these two weapons together can make very easy work of anything that isn't highly resistant to fire damage, and since the weapons use the exact same stats and damage types, they benefit from all of the exact same stuff, so the build is optimized using them both together anyway. On this setup, for the talismans you want the Dread Talisman, Shard of Alexander, Fire Scorpion Charm, and a defensive talisman of your choosing. And then the Physic, Fire Scorpion Charm, plus the Blood Sucking Tear. Blood Sucking Tear's HP drain is especially a non-issue here, since you can just heal it back with the Blasphemous Blade. Now for the Crucible setup. Similar to the Magma setup, this uses two weapons together and switches between them in combat, depending on which is better for a specific part of the fight. The weapons here are Celerius Tree and Ardovis Greatsword. Silarius Tree is a fantastic weapon that I think is a bit underappreciated. The weapon skill is Dischargeable Projectile Attack, which hits pretty hard, has great stagger and knockback and excellent range, and also pretty good stance damage. So it's just all around fantastic at dealing with any enemy that gives you openings at range. And when you're not getting those ranged openings, you switch over to Ardovis Greatsword. This weapon has a higher attack rating and a better moveset for its attacks than Celerius Tree. So it's better when you aren't using skills. Also, Ardovis Greatsword skill is fantastic when you do get a good opening to use it as well. It has fantastic hyper armor, damage, and incredible stance damage. So these two weapons together makes for a build that can go for stance breaks quite often on top of just doing a lot of damage while having both range and melee covered. Now there is a new Crucible weapon from the DLC, Devonius Hammer. However, this thing currently needs a buff pretty bad. The skill is very similar to Ardova's Greatsword, but it's slower and does less stance damage for some reason, so there's really just not a good reason to use it right now. You can also use the Crucible incantations here. Barn is fantastic at closing distance, and Tail can be good if you need AoE, and both of these also do decent stance damage as well. I wasn't using them in my playthrough because I didn't find them necessary, but they can be pretty good. Talismans use Godfrey Icon, this will buff both weapon skills, Shard of Alexander, Sacred Scorpion Charm, and a defensive talisman. Wanderous Physic, Blood Sucking Tear, plus Holy Tear, but if you want faster stance breaks, you can replace either one with the Thorny Craft Tear. And also for easier stance breaks, I really like to use the Spirit Summon Storm Harkadeen here, as it gives an aura buff that will give you 20% more stance damage. Alright, next up we have the Destined Death setup. This is focused around using Malakef's Black Blade and its weapon skill to deal a ton of percentile based damage. The weapon didn't necessarily really gain anything new in the DLC, but a lot of the DLC bosses have very high HP, 
and the destined death is fantastic against such enemies. Enemies also have a lot higher HP in the new game plus and beyond, so this weapon is fantastic for that, as you'll see in this footage against new game plus Placidus X. This weapon isn't just great for its skill, it's also great because it's got the great colossal sword moveset with a high attack rating, so while you do primarily use the weapon for its skill, it's important to not over rely on it. Also, alongside Malakep's Black Blade, I use the Black Knife. Its skill also deals Destined Death for great percentile damage, but it's a ranged attack, which is very useful to have, as enemies will often be moving around a lot, and not giving you as many openings as you would like to use the Black Blade skill. So Black Knife allows you to keep up that Destined Death damage even against such enemies. The Talismans here are Shard of Alexander, Sacred Scorpion Charm, an offensive talisman, and the two-headed sword talisman. However, since the name of the game here is percentile damage, you can replace the sacred scorpion charm for another defensive talisman so that you can afford to trade more often. And for the wanderer's physic, ideally the blood sucking tear and the holy tear, but if you want to be a bit more defensive, you can replace the blood sucking tear with the opaline heart tear. And now lastly, we have all the divine bonk stick weapons which are focused on simply whacking things and hitting them hard with an even split of physical and holy damage. For this, there are four different weapons I like to use. Firstly, the new DLC weapon, Shadow Sunflower Blossom. I absolutely love this weapon because it really just knows its identity. It doesn't do anything fancy at all, it's just a huge sunflower with a high attack rating that you whack things with. The weapon skill slams the weapon down, and you can press it again for a follow-up with two more hits. If you hit with it all three times, it can deal a total of 63 stance damage. Combine that with the high stance damage of its regular attacks as a colossal weapon, this weapon can be pretty good for stance whip breaking. And the skill also has very good hyper armor, so it can trade with a lot of enemies. Another really good new weapon is the Black Steel Great Hammer. This is an infusible great hammer with innate holy damage and faith scaling. This weapon actually has the highest attack rating out of all infusible great hammers by a pretty good margin. In this build, we use it on the heavy affinity to maximize the strength scaling, while buffing it with Order's Blade to add a ton of holy damage on top of the innate holy damage it already has, thus allowing it to do damage evenly split between physical and holy, even on a heavy affinity. And another great thing about the Black Steel Great Hammer is, it has a unique enhanced guard counter. This is fantastic as the Great Hammer guard counter deals a massive 42 stance damage. So when using this weapon, you really want to pair it with a Great Shield for those counters. I'm using the Black Steel Great Shield because it has good damage negations and a decent guard boost, while not weighing too much. You'll just want to make sure you put it on a no skill, so that you can use the Great Hammer skill. The skill that I always use on the Black Steel Great Hammer is Prayerful Strike. It's the perfect skill for this weapon, as it hits decently hard, deals holy damage, heals, and deals high stance damage. Between the guard counters and Prayerful Strike, you'll be getting some very nice stance breaks quite often. And the next weapon is Great Club. Like the Black Steel Great Hammer, this weapon has innate faith scaling and holy damage while also being able to be buffed for Order's Blade for a ton of extra holy damage. This allows it to reach extremely high attack rating, like over 2000. So it's just a fantastic weapon to swing around, while hitting things for very high damage. But on top of that, it also just comes with an incredible weapon skill, Golden Land. This is that super annoying projectile attack that avatars love to spam when their HP is getting low. We can do that ourselves. These projectiles have incredible range and tracking, and deal pretty nice damage as well. Having the option for such a good ranged attack with a slow swinging bonk stick like this is fantastic. And last, but certainly not least, I have Merica's Hammer. This weapon has a pretty good attack rating while swinging very fast, so it's great if you want something faster than the slower weapons above. But the best thing about Merica's Hammer is without a doubt the skill. This skill has insane hyper armor, so far I've actually never been interrupted out of it by anything. The damage from the skill is also pretty good while having a huge 360 degree AoE radius that knocks enemies up. 
This is fantastic in exploration, as you can easily take out entire packs of enemies with it while pushing through their attacks and staggering through them. But that AoE is also nice for boss fights, as sometimes the weapon itself won't connect with the boss on the slam, but that won't matter because they'll almost always still get hit by the AoE. Now the weapons that I use on this setup, the, the talismans I'll usually use with these weapons are Shard of Alexander, Sacred Scorpion Charm, Two-Headed Sword Talisman, and a Defensive Talisman of choice. However, if using the Black Steel Great Hammer, we don't two-hand that one, the Two-Handed Sword Talisman gets replaced by either the Great Shield Talisman or Corpse Sword Talisman, whichever you prefer. And for this setup, the Wanderer's Physic is again the Bloodsucking tier plus Holy tier, but you can replace either with the Thorny tier if you want easier stance breaks, or the Opaline Hard tier if you want an easier time trading with enemies. And if you are using the Black Steel Great Hammer, if you're good at timing your blocks, the Deflecting Hard tier is a must, as it will enhance those guard counters even farther. And for the armor on this build, it's mostly just going for drip and defenses. I use the Halid Tree Knight helmet because it gives 2 points into faith so it's 2 free levels, it also aesthetically fits the build theme. And if you want to optimize further, you can use a chest piece that gives some bonuses such as Leda's armor, as it will buff rolling and dashing attacks if you happen to do those often, while also just looking very cool and fitting the theme of the build. But aside from the helmet, I mostly just changed the rest of the armor around for Drip. Also with the helmet, there are other stat boosting helmets you can use instead. If you want to get the most value out of it, the Haima Glintstone Crown would give you 2 points into intelligence and strength, so it would save you 4 levels instead of 2. Also just a quick note, make sure the seal you are using on this build is the Art Tree Seal. Now for the incantations, it's mostly just going to be buffs. Blessing of the Archery is used to counterbalance the HP drain of the Bloodsucking tier. Golden Vow is the aura buff, but just note it won't stack with the Stormhawk Dean if using that. For the body buff, Aleph's Trueberry is ideal for damage, but it makes you take a lot more damage in return, which can be too risky to do in a melee build like this where you're are likely getting hit often. So you can use Flame Grant Me Strength instead, it will buff your damage by considerably less, but it also buffs your stamina recovery, which is pretty great. There's also all the damage negation body buffs like Flame Protect Me and Lord's Divine Fortification that you can use if needed for a specific fight. Order's Blade is the weapon buff we use to buff our Black Steel Great Hammer and Great Club. And the Archery Seal is nice to keep on you, as with 80 faith in the Archery Seal, this all pretty much always fully heals you. And then the remaining slots don't really matter much since we aren't focusing on damaging incantations, but keeping a few good ones on you can be nice, such as Pest Thread Spears. Lastly, let's go over the stats. Once again, I am at New Game Plus 6 in this video, so I am at level 275. This is the level I chose to stop leveling my character, as it's enough for me to optimize the hybrid builds that I like to play, such as this one. The stats are 60 Vigor, 48 Mind, 50 Endurance, 80 Strength, 15 Dexterity, 13 Intelligence, 78 Faith, which is 80 with the Helmet, and 10 Arcane. If you're trying to play the build at a lower level, you leave Strength at 54 as you'll still hit the soft cap of 80 by two-handing. You also don't need nearly as much Mind as I have, I just have that much because I have to spare levels to do so. Endurance can also be cut down if you wear lighter armor and and or use the Great Jar's arsenal. You can also leave Faith at like 50 to 60, but if you do, you'll actually want to be casting the Fire Knight or God Slayer seal instead of the Earth Tree. And if you aren't going to high new game plus cycles and your gameplay is good enough, you can leave Vigor at 50. Also, make sure you pick the Vagabond as your starting class to be able to optimize the stat spread at a lower level. And that fully covers the build. I had a ton of fun using this build on New Game 6, that handled the extreme difficulty of this level very reliably. He doesn't do quite insane damage like the Dragon builds, but the damage is still very nice, it's just overall very reliable and very versatile, so you can switch between different setups and weapons for what's best for each specific fight. So if you liked this video, please be sure to give a like and subscribe and comment your thoughts below. Thanks and goodbye.